In this video, I'm going to walk through how to define dimensions for use for budgeting. One of the new capabilities in Dynamics AX 2012 is to determine which dimensions you want to actually enter budget amounts against. And before defining dimensions for budgeting, your organization should determine the level in which they want to produce budget versus actual reporting. The dimensions that are used or available for budgeting are based on the dimensions that exist within the chart of accounts for your organization. So before getting into defining the dimensions for budgeting, I just wanted to highlight the dimensions that are in use within the chart of accounts for my organization. So within my chart of accounts, I have two different account structures in use. I'm just going to open up the profit and loss account structure so you can see the different dimensions. So all of these dimensions will be available for entry uh, within the system when any of these accounts, uh, main accounts are used within this account structure. And, and all of these dimensions would be also available for budgeting should I choose to budget at that level. So once the chart of accounts has been defined, to enable the dimensions for budgeting, simply go into the budgeting area and select dimensions for budgeting. And in this uh, window, you'll see all of the dimensions that are in use within the chart of accounts. And I simply make the selection for the dimensions I want to include um, or that will be available for actually deriving or entering budget amounts. And this gives you the, the full flexibility of determining at what level you want to track and enter budgets. So should you just choose to track budgets on a department level, you have the flexibility to do so or any combination of these uh, dimensions that exist within the chart of accounts. And that's a, as simple as it is. You select which dimensions you would like from the chart of accounts and make them a budget dimension. To highlight some of the other setup that needs to be performed before you can enter budget amounts, I'll just highlight um, that a number sequence does need to exist for budget register entry. And then you'll also need to define budget models. And a budget model is a identifier of budget. So I'm simply going to create um, a 2011 budget here. And I can also make the determination if um, the entries for this particular budget model will also um, be accessible for cash flow forecasts. I can also determine if this budget model would have submodels, and that allows for a parent-child relationship between one budget model to multiple other budget models. So now that I have my model created, I've, I've completed the setup for that area. And then lastly, I just need to create budget codes. And budget codes are, are um, user-defined and allow you to have greater audit trail over um, the budget amounts as they're being entered so you can later report on these budget codes and also the budget types to understand the, the type of budget register entry that has been performed. So we have various types of budget. It could be original budget, it could be um, based on a budget transfer, so transferring budget from one department to another for example. It could be a revision and then also if you're using advanced budgeting capabilities you'll also be able to perform manual reservations of budget of type encumbrance or pre-encumbrance um, and additionally have carry forward budget so if you have budget remaining at the end of the year or end of your budget cycle and choose to bring that budget forward into the new year you can create budget register entries of carry forward budget type so that you can then later report against which budget um, was new for the, the budget cycle versus what was carried forward from the prior um, budget cycle. And then the remaining budget types are used for uh, transferring budget from these different areas of um, Dynamics AX. So project, for example, has its um, budgeting capabilities for project and you can transfer those project budgets into um, the operating budget. So for this one, I'm just going to choose original budget. I can set it as the default code. I can also specify a reason code that we would be applied uh, when choosing this budget code. Um, alternatively, you can make that selection when you're entering budget register entries. And I can also apply a workflow. And we'll cover, cover the setup of workflow in a later video uh, for setting up budget transfer rules.
So once I have my budget codes created, now I'm ready to begin entering budget amounts. So within the budget register entry, I'm going to choose to create a new uh, budget register entry. And then here is where I'll make the selection of my budget model that I'm entering budget for, the budget code for this specific uh, transaction, and you'll see my budget type defaults. I can specify a reason code should I choose to need one. Now I can begin entering the lines for this budget register entry, and this is where the budget amounts will come from for the particular combinations of dimensions that I select. So the date will represent the uh, the period within the budget cycle that the amounts will be allocated. I'll pick my um, account structure, in this case profit and loss, and then I'll begin entering in the dimension combination. So I'll first start with main account was the first dimension, and I'll choose my uh, travel expense, and then I can choose a particular department such as um, IT, and then choose my uh, cost center. In this case, I'll choose the East project. So now I have my combination that I'm entering budget for, and then I can just simply enter in the budget amount, and then update budget balances, which will then update this combination for $1,000. And then there are some other techniques for automatically allocating budget across periods. So for example, if I wanted this amount to be recurring for each period, I could specify the interval of one month with an expiration date as of the end of the budget cycle and then all those entries will be automatically generated and again the final step is updating the budget balance. So I hope this gives you a quick understanding of the the setup um, required for entering in budget. Again you have the capability of determining which financial dimensions within your chart of account um, that you would like to enable for budgeting to allow you to have the flexibility of determining those dimensions and uh, that are applicable for your organization and then run comparative reporting for um, budget versus actual.